I hate everything about the Dorn plot in the television show. And before you call me a butthurt book nerd, I just want you to know that you're right. I am mad that the brilliant tapestry that was the Dornish plotline in George R. R. Martin's book series was reduced to this neo-feminist nonsense. This pandering drivel that made caricatures out of layered and complex characters from George R. R. Martin's book series. In the novels, Dorn is the most equal out of all seven kingdoms. When it comes to inheritance, it goes by birth. That means that if the Starks were in Dorne, that Sansa would have become the Lady of Winterfell once Rob died, and not Bran. As a matter of a fact, in A Feast for Crows, a woman, Ariane Martell, the daughter of Doran Martell, is the future ruler of all of Dorne. Dorne is very much about men and women having equal standing in society and working together to form the best society possible. But what did the show give us? Weak men will never rule Dorne. By the way, that's totally like not how Dornish politics would work. Ilaria Sand is like not a member of the royal family like at all. And I think the Dornish people actually have some integrity. I don't know that they would just be okay with three kin slaying bastards ruling Dorne. You know, murdering the prince is kind of a big crime and I hate how Game of Thrones portrays it as like no one in all of Dorne stood up against these random women that just murdered the royal family. You see, George R. R. Martin is a real feminist. I mean, the classic definition of feminism, which is equality of the sexes. Not all the women kill the men and just take over everything. That's what Game of Thrones is giving to us. And if I was a woman, I would be insulted. I'm insulted and I'm not even a woman. But if I was a woman, I would be insulted by this portrayal of women as these heartless, meaninglessly antagonistic vicious people that have no respect for even their own family members. We're talking about women that literally murder their own uncle and their prince, their flesh and blood, in order to avenge their father who purposely entered a perfectly legal trial by combat in order to avenge the death of his sister. So these strong, intelligent, powerful female characters' idea of avenging their father who wanted to avenge the death of his family is to murder the rest of his family, including his brother and his nephew? This is the same television show that has characters like Brienne and Cersei. How, how is this the same show? How is this the same freaking show? You know what? I'll tell you how. Because Cersei and Brienne are actually based off of their characters from the books. Illyria San, after Oberyn dies in the show, is a completely different character to the way she is portrayed in the books from that point on. In the show, she's warmongering and spreading all this dangerous rhetoric for no reason. In the books, she is very rationally advocating for nonviolence because she was there. She understands that Oberyn willingly went into this knowing that he could die. She was there. She understands that violence is not the answer. And George R. R. Martin, very cleverly, I might add, contrasts this against the Sand Snakes who are younger and more wild and more aggressive and they want to avenge their father. So they're warmongering, yes. But also, Doran Martell isn't totally incompetent like he is in the show. So when he knows that they're stirring crap up, he locks them in a fucking tower. He doesn't just let them run rampant knowing that they're plotting against him. The Dornish plot went totally south as soon as they strayed away from the book. As soon as Jamie and Bronn go down to Dorne to rescue Princess Marcella, I knew that that's when this, this, it's done. It's over. It was like the cheesiest, most horribly choreographed fight scenes. Sand snakes were introduced, they were completely one dimensional. You've got one that's a sex kitten. You've got one that's kind of butch and mean. You got one that's got no personality at all. And it's just kind of a shame. It's like they put no effort whatsoever into fleshing out these characters and it just makes me so upset. And then the revenge of the Sand Snakes, the, the quote unquote revenge is like so stupid. Oh, we're just gonna murder Marcella for no reason because Oberyn chose to enter a trial by combat against the freaking mountain of all the people, one of the most dangerous men in the entire seven kingdoms. Everyone knew that there was a possibility that Oberyn would die, but it was his choice. 
Marcella had nothing to do with this. Why would they want to kill Marcella? I guess Oberyn was lying when he said they didn't hurt little girls in Dorne. <laughs> Look, Cersei was right again. And if you pay attention from season to season, all of a sudden, like, two of the Sand Snakes are on the boat with Tristane and like, where is this? Are, are we in King's Landing? Are we still in Dorne? They don't really tell you where we are at this point in time because they were at the dock when the boat left and this boat is idle and there are some buildings nearby. Is this King's Landing? Is this Dorne? I don't freaking know, no one knows. Like how did they go undetected? Did they follow them? Did they, were they, did they sneak on the boat? Like were they hiding on the boat? Like how did they even freaking get there? That doesn't make any freaking sense. What they did to Arya Hota was a freaking shame. It's way worse than what they did to Barriss and Selmy. At least Barriss and Selmy fought back. Arya Hota dies with like a little prick in the back. It is ridiculous. And these showrunners really know how to piss off nerds too because they hire Star Trek actor Alexander Siddig from Deep Space Nine who has an immense amount of nerd cred and they say we're gonna put him on Game of Thrones and then they kill him after a few episodes. It was freaking ridiculous. You hire an amazing actor like that to play an amazing character and you just kill him. Before he even gets a chance to do anything. Before he even gets a chance to show why he's amazing in the books. Every single Dornish character is like that. Every single Dornish character in the show is a sad shadow of what they were in the book. With the exception of Oberyn Martell and Illyria Sand in season 4. After that, it is straight downhill. I don't know if the Dornish plot has a single redeeming feature. It wasn't even Dorne. It was the freaking Water Gardens. Like, it, Dorne is a giant kingdom. It is not just this one castle. Like, it's, they, they don't even get that across. That it, They don't even get it across that it's mostly desert. How do you not get that across? The killing of Dorne Martell was done solely for the purpose of shock value. They botched absolutely botched the season five Dornish plot line. So they say, we're just gonna kill it off. We're just gonna kill it off. Instead of even trying it, they just say, screw it. We're just gonna go in a completely different direction to prove that we're different from the books, to prove that we're going in a different direction. We'll make a better story. We'll tell we'll tell a better story than genius George R. R. Martin. Okay, sure. Be honest, this is when everyone noticed that the show was 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 going the trash. And in season five, when the Dornish stuff was happening, pretty much everyone was like, yeah, what what is this nonsense? What is this? Everything that made that plot line interesting in the books is totally gone. And there are certain people that have a problem getting into the Dornish plot line in the books because it doesn't have any of the characters that we're familiar with. But once you really get into those characters and you become invested in what's going on, it really picks up and becomes very intriguing because there's plans within plans and conspiracies within conspiracies and who knows what's really going on with Doran Martell and that's why he's such an interesting guy because he's playing Savas, he's playing the Westeros version of chess and he's moving around those pieces to what end we don't know and we'll never know in the show because he's dead. The showrunners definitely caught wind of how much everyone hated this Dorn crap and how much we all hated the Sand Snakes in particular because they killed them in such messed up ways last season. Even I was like, okay, I kind of dig Euron now, even though I still hate that guy that plays Euron. I was kind of like, okay, I commend him for brutally murdering these women. I commend him for doing that. Now, I feel like people are going to throw the S word at me for making this video sexist, but whatever, if that's what you took from a video of legitimate criticisms of a terrible plot line that was the death of a show this this is the this is the fulcrum by which the show turns onto a path of absolute shit. this is when it all just went i just don't get it if you don't think george r, r. martin's books are feminist enough then you must be reading the wrong book i mean catelyn cersei daenerys brienne are these not strong powerful female characters all in their own way and in the books, these strong female and characters also include Ariane Martell, who's not in the show, and the Sand Snakes. They're on that list of layered and complex strong female characters in the books, but in the show that is not at all what they are. Like I have said before, they are caricatures of what they should be. What we're seeing here, I think, is like if Leonardo da Vinci had an unfinished painting, and then some ninth grade art student came up and tried to finish the painting. That's what we're getting with Game of Thrones now. We're getting the finished high school art student version of A Song of Ice and Fire. 
People are always asking me, if you hate it so much, why do you keep talking about it? If you why, why do you have so many videos just talking crap about the Dornish plotline? If you hate it so much, just stop talking about it. You know what? Screw you. You don't understand what it's like to be a freaking real nerd. You're right, right. Being a nerd is popular now, but you don't know what it's like to be a real nerd. Because if you're a real nerd, you get really invested in these things. And I just think that it's really sad that the majority of people in the world will never know what the real Dornish plotline is unless they read A Song of Ice and Fire, which most people will not do because people do not read books like they should. You can tell someone a million times to read a book and they will never do it. But tell them to watch a TV show or to watch a movie, they'll finish it in a week. So for most people now, when they think of Dorne, they're going to think of this wannabe Xena warrior princess nonsense. All right, I should probably end this here before I have a stroke. This video is probably going to get demonetized because I said the word feminism too much. So if you like this channel, consider supporting it on Patreon and make sure you like and subscribe for more ideas of ice and fire. Bad pussy.